Welcome to Inform Sources on News Channel 3, where we talk about the week's big stories with local voices. I'm your host, Greg Hurst. Thanks for joining us. In a moment, I'll introduce our panel, but first, here are tonight's hot topics. A big shakeup at the Memphis Area Transit Authority. Mayor Paul Young asked the entire board to step down and appoints nine new members following a scathing report about MATA's operations. We'll talk about what happened and what needs to be done to fix MATA's finances and improve service. We'll also discuss the ongoing investigation into Memphis Animal Services. The director of MAS was placed on leave back in June, but he's still on the city's payroll. And what's going on with the animal shelter? We'll get to the bottom of it. And the city of Memphis is getting into the hotel business, at least temporarily. We'll talk about the city's recent decision to purchase the Sheraton Hotel downtown and why the mayor believes it's a good deal for Memphis. But before we begin tonight's discussion, let's introduce our panel. I am joined by three Memphis City Council members, J.B. Smiley Jr., Jerry Green, and Yolanda Cooper Sutton. It's good to see you all. I'm excited. Are y'all? You should be. You have a lot on your plate, don't you? Yeah. Yes. It's, also, it's also very good for us. It gives us a lot to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. We're really going to appreciate your analysis and perspective, so we're glad you're all here. Welcome. All right, so let's begin tonight with the Memphis Area Transit Authority. The Memphis City Council has signed off on Mayor Paul Young's changes to the MATA board. Tuesday night, council members approved the nine new people appointed by the mayor to replace all of MATA's existing board members. That decision came after the city received a scathing report from a consulting firm paid around $336,000 to study MATA's operations. As far as MATA's executive leadership team is concerned, Young says there will be no changes there right now. They'll figure out the ultimate leadership. Um, my goal as mayor is to make sure that we have board representation that's going to be able to, to help make the tough decisions that are needed to get that system to where it's really working for the people of our city. Now, council members also voted to require MATA to report its budget to the council every quarter instead of just once a year. Well, Councilwoman, let's, let's start with you. We'll just go in line as long as we're here. Were there any signs that MATA was not on the right track? Well, I'm nine months into this. Right. So I'm fresh eyes, looking at it in a fresh perspective. And um, during last year, there was some chatter going on about there was possibly some issues and some grave concerns. And so I heard about it while I was on the campaign uh, trail last year. Didn't know the depths of it until I became councilwoman this year. And so... And, it has been a lot. And Sharon, you're not nine months into this. Uh, you, I feel like th I've, I've this is not your there. this is not your first rodeo. Does the council, you think, share any blame for the error in oversight on MATA? I think the issues with MATA have been going on for years. Now, you know, I'm not one to blame other folks. I will say the council always has a responsibility to do what we can to have some oversight. I think previous councils, including the when I was elected, we just didn't ask enough questions. We didn't demand matter to come in to bring their budget. We didn't demand to see the financials. I think if this council takes a completely different approach, this council is more hands-on, this council seeks more information from every entity, including matter. I think that's the way going forward. Councilwoman, Shout out to Councilwoman, Green. Councilwoman you're, you're fresh eyes here too, and, and you know hindsight is 2020. Who do you think is to blame, though? I think that's still to be determined, um, and I don't think it's just one person, and I don't think it's something that just happened recently. You know, the report we received said that this has been going on for years, but there hasn't been the proper correction in the last few months. That's why I introduced that resolution to make sure that we're receiving their budgets and financials quarterly. And what we received during budget time this past year was very um, opaque at best. And I questioned it then and continued to question it. And as it turns out, you know, those feelings, those intuitions were right. And so now we have actual procedures set in place to get a better picture and to get it regularly so we don't get a big surprise at one time. And, and Councilman, as someone who has been there for a while, you know, it's, it seems that MATA has received tens of millions of dollars, federal, state, local dollars. And alone. Yes, and alone. Where has that money gone? Well, that's what the uh, company was hired to do. They were hired to audit the financials so we can determine specifically where the money has gone. 
I think when we look at the broad scheme of things, this this leadership team has to do a better job of giving and disclosing information to its funding body. And I believe the city council is its largest funding body, so we should have privity to uh, of the information that they're sharing. Councilwoman, do you think the solution is as easy as just replacing the board members? I don't think it's that easy, but what we are in the process of doing as a 13 body, more oversight, more accountability, and if we are the largest donors to MATA, we should have more access to how the funding is being filled and where it's being spent. And so with this body and the resolution that Councilwoman Green and all the council members are sponsoring, we will have more insight on what is happening moving forward. You know, money seems to solve a lot of problems these days in any city government. Is, is that the solution here, do you think, Councilwoman, as far as the reduction in the routes and the layoffs? Uh, I think it's a big piece of it, but I think we also have to look at the operations, whether they're running efficiently, what we're doing as far as repairs and replacements, uh, how we are thinking forward for the fleet as a whole. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, the 116-page report that we received on MATA outlines a lot of those different things and so it's not just going to be the funding that is important because we are stewards of the taxpayers dollars and we believe in public transportation you know it is something that is good for our city good for the people who use it it helps get people to jobs it helps people in their day-to-day -day lives if you have you know a disability it's how you get around so we have to make it a priority and it's not just going to be about watching the dollars and cents but we're also going to have to watch how it impacts people's lives are they waiting an hour two hours, three hours for a bus, our bus is not showing up. I mean, they were showing that 80% of the people are only on 12 of the routes. Is that where we need to focus our time, energy, and money? Are we needing to replace our fleet because some of it has 250,000 miles on it? We've got to be looking at every single piece of this moving forward. So it's not just money, it's also operations. You know, Councilwoman brings up a good point. Will our friends and neighbors who rely heavily on MATA, will they be the ones who suffer in the interim until this is corrected? Well, you know, I think part of the uh, plan that Transpo kind of put forth uh, before the council, they push back against any layoffs. They also push back against some of the route cutting. What they want us to do is make sure that MATA is being good stewards of the money they receive from us. So it's not the council attention. I think the council will fight hard that there's no one adversely impacted by the changes with MATA. But, you know, our job as it relates to this is making sure that they are being good stewards with the dollars. For us, it's funding. For us, it's operations. And, you know, the mayor is within his discretion to remove any board members. But I don't think it's solely on the board members. I think we have to do a better job. I think the administration has to do a better job. I think everyone shares some part of the blame. And I think what we need to be looking forward to is how do we make it better going forward. And, Councilwoman, do you have a sense on how long it will take to right this ship? I don't have a sense on that, but I know that we are working together as partners, as Chairman J.B. Smiley just stated. We're going to have to come together collectively and figure this out because people's lives are at stake, mm -hmm. their jobs, going to their doctor's appointments. We have disabilities. We have people that solely depend on transportation, on their means of surviving in this city. And so we're going to have to take responsibility together, not just pointing the finger here, 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 here. We have an opportunity to right the wrong that has been made. All right. When we come back, we're going to shift our focus from MATA to MAS. What is the latest on the investigation into the director of Memphis Animal Services? That's coming up next on Informed Sources.